Hi, welcome back to Horse Flow Academy. Today we are doing the preparation for the equipment that we'll be introducing Aragon to. Aragon is a three and a half year old Percheron crossed with a South African Burpert. We have started the series and we have finished in episode one how to establish a clear line of communication between human and horse and then in episode two we established directional and energy influence with Aragon. Now today in episode three we are going to do the preparation basically creating buttons for where we will be um, preparing him to accept the equipment that we'll be putting onto him in the near future which will be a saddle and a bridle. I've got some horse uh, some horse fly spray in my hand today um, as you could have seen in the previous two episodes if you watch them uh, he's been quite annoyed by the flies um, so yeah after establishing some more directional and energy influence we now are just going to apply some fly spray before we start the session good boy Good boy. So as you can see, he's not too spooky or worried about the fly spray. He does react a tiny little bit. Um, I've been treating him for um, parasites, especially ticks in the environment we are in is quite heavily loaded with ticks. So he's not too unfamiliar with the sound of a spray and the sensation of moisture on his skin. Um, it's still the beginning though. So. I'm just starting off at his legs and allowing him to move that out of the way and the moment he stops um, considering to move away or stops the consideration of moving away, I stop applying the pressure. And when he relaxes, I go back to where I was and start making progress. Good boy. So instead of me moving around him, I'm going to use the opportunity and I'm going to ask his body to move for me as I've established that influence yesterday. And we're going to make progress on that today. That's perfect. That's okay. Right. So I just keep the same amount of pressure. I don't change what I was doing. It might be a bit of expensive exercise if the horse doesn't stop. So I just keep doing the same thing. And now I'm going to prove to him that I promise to release pressure when he stops or considers stopping. Good boy. And walk him out of it towards you. So that you prove to him that you are the stable, stable part of this foundation. Good boy. As long as your behavior doesn't change and you don't get stressed or nervous or anxious, you're able to maintain a much better connection between you, you yourself and your horse. So I'm spraying the exact same place where he started stressing and moving away from. Good boy. All right, once we finished with the fly spray, we will be moving on to today's lesson. Uh, before we do the new concepts, always start with a concept training and then we move on to perfecting those concepts. Um, before we start with today's concept, we are just going to run over yesterday's practices. I shot episode two yesterday with them and now we will just revise yesterday's teachings and build on that, moving on to today's new concepts. Good boy. He got that quite well. All right. All right, starting off on today's preparation for the equipment that we'll introduce him to, which will be a saddle and bridle. Preparation is the foundation. Foundation is the key to success and safety with our horses. The more we prepare them, the easier it is to introduce them to either new skills, concepts, or equipment such as you've seen me introducing the schooling whip to him yesterday for the first time. Um, and there was absolutely no fuss. There was no need to desensitize him as we are progressively building on his mindset and not just forcing him down on equipment. <coughs> All right, so now that we've got Aragon sprayed, hopefully he's a bit less frustrated and irritated by the flies and other insects today. Got some nasty horse flies in this area which really suck a decent amount of blood and stings quite a bit. 
Now we're just going to start um, recapping on what we have achieved to this point. So we're just going to run over um, all the foundational principles in regards to developing a clear line of communication, which is just what we've talked about um, thoroughly in episode one, where we apply empathy with our horse, we establish our intentions and a clear goal, and then we apply active and passive body language and make it really clear to the horse when we have active body language language or when we have passive body language. So right there Aragon responded to my active body language. It might be a minute movement but I respect that and I, re I reward him by releasing pressure. So active passive body language, releasing pressure and then once your horse has done quite well in what you've asked him then give them a praise and reward them by completely taking the pressure of stimulus away and you see how he immediately relaxes, cocks his hind leg, chews his lips or licks his lips and immediately goes into a different brainwave. Good boy. So that's recapping on establishing a clear line of communication. Then the following step, what we've established has been directional and energy influence. That's what we worked on yesterday, um, shooting episode two yesterday and really moving on to episode three today. And we building quite quickly on Aragon, but uh, yeah, it's all about seeing how we can establish a solid foundation with proper preparation and also doing all of this at an accelerated pace without rushing the horse. So let's see where we left off yesterday. Asking him to back. Good boy, back for me. So yesterday we were establishing the concept and I've done some basic work with him before, like I mentioned in episode two, in order just to prepare him to trim his feet. Um, I've been trimming his feet twice now and it was not too difficult the second time. The first time was quite stressful for him uh, and then I did some more preparation and then we established a better control and we got him to give his feet quite voluntarily and I trimmed his feet a second time about a week or two ago. So it's not perfect foundation on him. We established concept lessons yesterday and we re-emphasized on concept lessons and today we're advancing those as we've established directional control like I've proved to you right, right now. We can back him up, got direction, but I also started establishing energy control with the backing so I can ask him to back up my energy and ask him to back with higher levels of energy and take it back down. So he needs to understand when I'm actively increasing my energy or actively decreasing my energy. The reason for all of this is so that we can establish a good foundation and make it easier when we start asking our horse under saddle all of these cues. So we advance everything from a standstill to a walk, then to a trot, and at last when the horse is showing us that they are ready, then we can progress things onto a canter. So we're back into the open arena for the second time only. <laughs> Good boy, he's listening to my body language. Um, so yeah, this is the second time we in the open arena. The first time was just the introduction video I did with you in episode one when we established a clear line of communication. And this is the first time that I'm going to be asking him to respond to me with directional and energy influence in an open environment. The previous work we did was in a picadero. Good boy. So I just asked him to move in a direction for me. Remember, we're just recapping on directional and energy influence. So I backed him up and I sent him to the right and he moved to the right. And I rewarded him by... <laughs> what is it, Do you want to Scratch your head. Good boy. So I rewarded him for going off in the direction that I asked. At the energy level that I asked, I just wanted to walk. He didn't go on off onto a trot. He maintained his energy and I rewarded him by drawing him back into me. When I draw him in, I first heal these hindquarters as I've gained influence over that and then I ask him to come. So he's leading off to his friends right now. I'm not going to be punishing him. Just simply ask him to come back here. I'm talking to you. Thank you. All right, will you back up for me again? using minimal pressure as long as he's doing what I'm asking I'm keeping it the same. Remember it's still the beginning of his education. 
So he's thinking of going to his right, so then I ask him to go off to his left, doing the opposite. Good boy. So we just gonna ask him nicely, keep your energy level there. Now I'm gonna ask him to change direction because he's already done it to the left. Now we're gonna to the right now he's gonna do it to the left. Good boy. Just a nice steady walk. Good boy. Once we've got that both ways, reward. Good boy. Make sure he understands that you are the resting place. Good boy. All right, so that was just recapping on yesterday's advancement in directional and energy influence. So there's gonna be more recapping as this video continues. Might just skip a couple of parts in order for time saving, but just for you to see the concept of directional and energy influence builds on top of each other and it is not all occurring in one day. As we dis discussed earlier and we've established a clear line of communication, don't stop building on that. Just continue building on that process of developing a clear line of communication. Always prove to your horse that you will not hurt them and that you are the safe zone and also that you will give them rest. And then you achieve a lot more, a lot easier. See how soft he is. There's barely any pressure and he's backing up. It's quite nice. All right, so we've asked him to move off to his left twice now. Now he's almost anticipating it, so I'm just gonna ask the opposite direction. I point, and he goes, well done. If the rope goes tight, it's not me pulling, it's him extending past the, past the distance that I want him to be. It's generally because he's either trying to go his friends or leaving the arena. So I might sponge sponge the lead rope just to get some response off of his head coming into my side just bending in a bit good boy there he anticipates the bend and he gives it to me well done okay all right so now establish directional control and energy at a walk you see how i've established direction at a standstill with episode two i establish control over the body forwards backwards or influence over the body forwards backwards the hindquarters and then lastly the shoulders and now because i've done that the doing all of those things at a walk is actually quite simple all right just make him go past his desired area of location of the arena Now that we've got that quite consistent, we're gonna move on to a trot and see how we perform. Yesterday we established our first um, trotting, uh, which was nice and consistent when we left it off. So let's see where we pick up today. Good boy. All right, make sure he knows which direction we're asking and we're not pushing too quickly. Up, good boy, get a shot and release. Just before they stop, just apply a bit more pressure when you see they're slowing down and just before they get down to that point where they break the gate, apply pressure and release for the moment that they give you a result. Nice and consistent, and we bring him in. Good boy. Good boy. Whoopsie. <laughs> oh, 
Mm -hmm. All right, let's go the other way. Lovely to see how soft he is becoming. We're not making any physical contact. You can see the lead uh, is, is on the ground and I'm not making any physical contact. I'm just giving visual cues. So remember, this is all in preparation for developing the buttons that we will prepare him with in a short while so that we can introduce the equipment to saddle and bridle to him in the near future. Good boy. All right, let's try the other way. Point, he's going in the wrong direction. Not to punish, just re-establish influence, hindquarters, shoulders, direction, point. Good boy, reward him. And energy up. Good boy. Not so consistent this way around. Uh, we'll work on that again. We're just getting him to move into a trot, not breaking the gate, and reward him for not breaking the gate. All right, we're going to continue building on that again. Oops. <laughs> a common saying that you'll hear from many horse trainers or horsemen around the world is. Um, especially when starting a green horse is sometimes to be like a fence post where you just remain your your tightness of your 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 lead rope or lead rein and then wait for the horse to tighten himself up and then he releases off of that good boy let's go back Just upping the energy on the back of it. We're going back to the same direction that we left off last time as it was not perfect. See, he's getting really good at reading our intentions. I'm just sponging on this lead rope so that we can just get him a bit more responsive off of it. He's really not doing too bad for a first time properly working, working in this open space. So I'm asking hindquarters by looking, and I'm asking shoulders by applying quite a lot of visual pressure. Yep. All right, so now it's just time to make further progress. So right now I'm stretching his abilities, his knowledge, what he's comfortable with. Every time he's getting to the spot where he's thinking of breaking away or moving towards his friends, I'm applying more pressure and I'm releasing right there, releasing, good oh boy, releasing pressure where he doesn't want to be, where he wants to be, up the pressure. And where he doesn't want to be, release pressure. Uh -uh, keep walking for me, thank you. And walk. Good boy. So influencing the horse's energy is absolutely essential to be able to do it up and down. Don't forget to just get excited, or well, don't just get excited and just teach your horse how to up their levels of energy and then you get to a point where you need to ride them and ask them to stop and you can't stop them and then you wonder why. Establishing energy influence from the ground up and when doing so, teach your horse to take energy up and energy down from the ground up. Oh. Okay. 
drawing him into me so that we don't just drive but we find a balance between draw and drive. What are you seeing? Hearing. You'll see every time we stand still and I'm busy talking to you or talking to him that we constantly um, making contact and we're constantly rubbing and I'm touching him in all the places that you'll find that young or green horses tend to try and avoid human contact. Oops, I hear a big thorn in his ear. Oh boy. That's quite nice. You'll see there's quite a lot of influence over his body and it's at absolute minimal effort from my side. Good boy. Starting your horse is absolutely not a process that should be rushed. Take your time, always assess your situation with your horse. Are you pushing things too quickly? Um, are you able to move a bit quicker? Is your horse getting bored? It's also another reason why we're moving into the open arena for this episode, as I'm just trying to stimulate his mind and we don't just go into the picadero every day and do the same thing over and over. Um, we're changing environments, but I'm staying consistent and that's assisting quite a lot with the progress um, where I'm able to communicate with him because I'm the only thing that doesn't change much. Good boy. All right, we're gonna continue stretching his his abilities a bit more before we start preparing him with an aid and just making physical contact there with a the rope. Good boy, it's fine. Getting a bit irritated by the flies in anticipation of the higher levels of energy that we've been exploring the last couple of minutes. Good boy. Licking his lips and I'm gonna just give him a moment to digest that. Good boy. Point in the direction you want him to go and then apply vocal or visual pressure as it's required. But remember to start where you want to end. Start with the end in mind. Not what you want to achieve in the perfect future. Start applying pressure at that level. So that means for most people we want to just think about what our horses need to do for us and then they do it. Which essentially means intentions. All right, so we have established a concept for Aragon to move his hindquarters off of the potential area where the leg pressure will be um, from his left side. Now we're gonna have to do the same thing from his right side. So you'll see I'm trying to use minimal body language. I'm trying to use complete physical touches. That is what he's gonna rely on when you're on their back. And if the physical touch is not enough, I'm gonna start using a vocal cue. And he's already anticipating <laughs> it's not a bad thing necessarily as it is what I'm asking for or intending to ask for so that's him reading my intentions all right so um, let's just move you all right so I'm gonna apply pressure with my ha my fingertips on the spot that I'm gonna ask of him potentially where my leg will be and I'm applying very light pressure right now just to make him accustomed to the sensation of my hand being there. Remember, start off by just rubbing them, make sure they are happy with the sensation of you moving around them with your hand. And apply that pressure. Cool, he's good with, he's comfortable with the area. Now I'm gonna apply pressure with my fingertips and I'm gonna start squeezing. One, two, three, four, just in a rhythm. And I get a response of moving his body and I reward him. All right, that's the right idea. I want you to move your body from that pressure and now he moves his hindquarters and his shoulders, but we cannot expect perfection in the beginning. Giving 10, 20 seconds for that one. Good boy, let's go back to that. Steady pressure. All right, now rhythm, one. Two, three, four. One, two, three.
Hungry. Oh, that's all right. Good boy. It was more of walking off than just moving the hindquarters, so I um, gave him a moment of reward and I jumped right back in. Now he's backing up instead of moving the hindquarters, but he's essentially moving off with the pressure. So I gave him a moment of an explanation, just telling him like, yeah, I want your body to move from the finger pressure. Vocal cue, body language, good boy. Reward the effort. If you reward the effort, you'll maintain willingness or even develop willingness and motivation for your horse to do things for you that are not necessarily something that they would have done by themselves. Good boy. Mm -hmm. All right, 10, 20 seconds, jump back in. Steady pressure. All right, now more intense physical pressure with a bit of a rhythm. And look how soft he is right there. You've got an itch on your bum. We're going to have to go back to that one. Slow rewarding me. Did the thing that I was asking of. Good boy. I'm keeping my right hand steady so that he makes contact with the head collar if he pulls his head away. That's all right. Good boy. All right, I'm gonna give it one more time. Just want a bit more of an accurate movement. He's quite irritated by the parasites at the moment. All right, back to moving. Good boy. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more time where I get a bit more of an exclusive hindquarter movement. Yes, almost. Good boy. So in that situation, there was a micro release before I applied pressure for the second time. He backed his hindquarters up, but I was asking his hindquarters to move away from the pressure, but in a lateral um, direction, so directly away or perpendicular direction from my, my pressure. So right away, 90 degrees away from where I'm applying the pressure and he moved backwards. I gave a micro release to say it's the right leg, but now I just want that leg to move in a different direction. So I moved right back into the pressure. Not the front leg. Good boy, that leg, yes. Good boy, that leg, yes. Yes, that leg, good boy. There we got it. And now it's gonna be a big rest and digest. So now we've established a very clear understanding of the concept about moving his hindquarters from tactile sense, from physical pressure on the hindquarters. And now we have to progress with that to the shoulders. So we are able to direct the hindquarters with our leg position in the future. And now we're gonna have to establish that for the shoulders as well going to be the exact same concept we're going to apply apply um, physical pressure just make sure first he's comfortable with the touch of where our leg will be and he's not minded by that and then we will apply physical pressure so remember it's easier to get your horse to drive away from you than what it is to draw him into you or it's also safer to establish a drive in the beginning more than what you do a draw you want to have a balance so your horse wants to be with you but too much is going to be a horse on your toes and a horse pushing you into the door walking into and out of the stable or through gates or whatever else it might be all right so moving back to shoulder shoulder influence from physical pressure so right now I'm applying slight pressure with my hand he's comfortable with my hand being there he thinks it might be a fly but it's not so I'm only gonna reward the leg movement in the adequate direction so before I use my body language or vocal cue it's just one two three four one two three four one two three four one, two, three, four. I'm assisting him now. Good boy. It's 
So I start off this new cue that I'm teaching him by only that touch sensation. Then I use a bit of a vocal cue. He's not responding. Then I start using my body to which he is already familiarized as a clear cue for moving his shoulders. Everything we do builds on the previous achievement that we have had with him. Come on, Argon. Shoulder. Good boy. Lifted that leg up and I reward him for that. Even if it might have been for a fly, he still moved it an inch closer towards each other, his other leg. Again. Good boy. He moves his other leg out of the way. I'm using my body language as well. Good boy. And that deserves a bit of a rest. Again. I'm using my body language to make it easier for him to understand as he showed some uncertainty in the beginning. And once we achieve consistent movement now with my body aiding him, good boy, he gets the concept. Now I'm gonna just break down this cue to the most basic level. I'm lifting my hand up, not backing. All right. Back there, just tactile pressure. Hey, he thought about moving and I'm gonna reward him again. I'm constantly asking a rhythm with my fingertips and I'm just moving with him. I'm not asking him directly with my body language this time. And he's lifting his leg up. I'm gonna to have to engage with my body again. Good boy. During episode two, I thoroughly explained that it's much more challenging for a horse to give up influence or control over their shoulders, um, as where that's where they find most of their safety is being able to determine their own direction and also being able to see what's going on in front of them and where their visual focus lies is where their mental focus is and his mental focus is with his friends so not 100% with me so he's not so keen on continuously moving his shoulders now away from his friends, good boy All right, so he's stepping back into me. So then I'm just gonna increase the, the visual pressure until I get a nice response, just to remind him that that is the thing that we are looking for is movement of the shoulders. Good boy. Just physical touch. I'm giving a visual, or a vocal cue. Still just only touch. And for the first time, he properly moved off with his shoulder just from the visual touch, oh, physical touch. Relaxation occurs right away. It's a good sign. Just 10, 20 seconds. Right, move straight back to that same cue as that's where we left off and it wasn't perfect. Physical touch, rhythm and increased pressure. He lifted his leg and I rewarded him. Physical touch, I'm gonna keep asking. I reward him just the micro release because he moved his leg slightly. Increased pressure. I have to move with him, otherwise I lose him, so I'm not actively engaging with my top part of my body, my torso, to tell him to move his shoulders. I'm just maintaining this physical pressure. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I get a response and I reward him. One, two, three, one, two, three. Response and a big reward. <coughs> Whatever we do on the one side, we need to establish on the other side as well. using the foundation that we have to move his shoulders. Good boy. And that's preparing him for what's coming up. Yeah, it's good. 
You want them to be soft off of any head collar contact and it makes it easier for the bridling. Physical contact with my hand on my future leg position for shoulder yielding. Apply pressure. Broad. Apply pressure. In a rhythm. One, two, three, one, two. And reward. Good. That was much easier than the other side. I prepared him a bit better by moving his shoulders over with his body la with my body language initially. So right now we're moving quite closely to what we're trying to achieve with and during this episode and that's purely the preparation for introducing the saddle and the bridle. Before we do that we need to accustom them with the sensation of where these pieces of equipment is going to be. You must make sure you'll be able to touch your horse wherever these pieces of equipment will be. Um, so that includes of course the girth, where your leg pressure will be. Make sure that your horse is not numb to those areas but also not overly responsive to those areas. So right now we've got some basic understanding of where the leg pressure will be when we try and ask the hindquarters to move out of the way. Oh boy. So we can heal these hindquarters from physical pressure that side, his shoulders from this side. Good boy. Just for a bit more advancement, I am using some basic aid with a with a head collar as well. Whilst we're on the shoulder, we keep moving the shoulder and start applying physical pressure. Good boy. And a reward, physical pressure, and a reward. Now the hindquarters, physical pressure. I'm only using my fingertips. And I'm just continuously, there we go, continuously asking in a rhythm until he responds. So now that we have prepared him for the touch sensation of where our stirrups will be, where our legs will be when we apply pressure with our legs, Right there, I'm already applying pressure on the head collar because now I want the primary source of pressure um, with this, this phase to be on the head. We are progressing from the saddle sensations to the head sensations of the bridle. So we need to be able to have pole control. Asking our horse to flex, flex his head down. Aragorn is quite sensitive on that. Asking them to back, so hopefully that is well established before you try and get on your horses all these preparation parts. All right, so we're able to move our horse forwards off the pole pressure, we're able to move them backwards off the nose band and pole pressure. If it's not good enough, increase a bit of vocal or even, even visual cue. All right, that's some basic preparation with the head collar for the bridle. And now we're going to advance that to um, preparation for uh, bending the head and the neck with, when we apply pressure with the bit in his mouth. We will take some sensations to the mouth corners after we've established better use of the head collar. So I'm just constantly asking him to bend. We've done some brief exercises with this before, that's why I'm not releasing right away so he does understand that making a touch with the head collar and pulling it in towards sort of the same position. I'll draw a line here with a, with a schooling whip. So just a straight line to where your hands will be positioned when you're on top of the horse. So prepare them for that same angle. He thinks it means backing and then release when he gives it to you. The wider you go away from his body, the easier it is for them to understand that they need to exclusively move the head and not the entire body. So I'm just busy sponging and in a rhythm when I ask on the lead. Whatever you do on the one side, you need to be able to do on the other side. Shoulder influence. So, he. A good reminder just to stay out of your horse's leg space. 
he just kicked me on the knee right there by chasing a fly away and that was really soft and really nice good boy a little bit of shoulder control and hindquarters just to get him standing straight good boy so i'm picking up and then very lightly asking and then sponging with the tips of my fingers please bring your head in please bring your head in good boy release please bring your head in not move your body bring it there release good boy so we are st able to establish the concepts about moving his head in every single direction with a head collar it's going to be a very different sensation when we add the bit as you can see he's moving away when i'm trying to put my finger in his mouth it could be sensation touch smell but we need to be able to put a metal piece in there so if you can't touch your horse in the mouth corners without them biting your finger off or trying to pull their head away quite dramatically or you're not being able to move their head with it but even by using the aid of the head collar then you can expect some difficulties when you put the bridle on for the first time a bit of shoulder influence i just want to make contact with the other corner mouth as well, other mouth of the uh, other corner of the mouth as well and wait for him to relax and i take my finger away i apply pressure by just keeping it constant as if we will have contact with a with a bit almost the same tightness as it would be when you put the bridle on if you see that that is too much just reduce that amount of pressure and just try and develop a way that you can apply physical contact or touch by the side of the mouth and not necessarily inside the mouth and then just consider all the whiskers as the nerve endings on horses faces are absolutely extraordinary and really really complex and sensitive all right so now we're gonna advance and we make physical contact with the corner of the mouth just as a note this is the first time we're doing it um, now i'm applying pressure on the corner of the mouth and i'm aiding now with a head collar i just want him to move to the left for me with his head and even though he wants to chase flies away good boy now release physical contact you can see Aragon really accepts pressure quite quickly because he's not stressed. If a horse is in a, a reactive state of consciousness or their sympathetic nervous system is aroused, then it makes it really difficult for them to accept any new form of pressure. So look how soft he's becoming there. My head collar pressure was consistent like, right, like it is right now. I apply pressure in the mouth corner and I start asking him to move away from just the mouth corner and I'm waiting for a response and I get a response and I release. So I essentially just sensitize them, if you want to use that word, to the sensation of the bit. Of course, I cannot compensate for the pressure it'll have either on the tongue or the roof of the mouth or the bars of the mouth, but this is just the beginning phases of this process. He's accepting that. Good boy, give me a bit more. I'm gonna apply some assistance with the head collar. I'm moving with him so he doesn't escape my finger because he won't be able to escape the bit. So just trying to imitate whatever you want to teach like it would be in real life or with a full vision. I'm being very spontaneous and quite abrupt which is not always a good thing um, but for purposes of shooting and advancing this episode I am showing you what is possible by just having a good foundation and then preparing your horse to try and avoid difficulties during the process of tacking your horse up and then later on backing. So he's trying to avoid the bit, which is very normal for young horses. Make sure he doesn't chew or bite his, jaw, his um, cheeks. And I'm just keeping my finger absolutely steady until he relaxes. If he rips it out, it's all right. No gonna make a big fuss about it and I release pressure right there you don't have to do it like this this is just my preferred creative idea with Aragon as of this video series um, as I've established some some foundational relationship with him and I want to advance the process of introducing the equipment I'm gonna ask him again 
and uh, yeah, good boy. All right, so he's semi-accustomed now to the sensation of, of where the bit will be. So it's not gonna be too big a deal for him once we do put the bit in his mouth. He might be chewing like that a bit, but now I've got the luxury of the moment that he relaxes with that, that stimulation, I can take it out, which is very difficult with a bit. There we go. Pressure. Like just the sensation of being present in the corners of the mouth. And he accepted that really nicely this time. Good. Fine. Make sure he's not chewing, chewing his cheeks. He wants to chase flies away, so he's getting really irritated. All right. Pressure. He's fine with that and release. Good. All right, so just a quick recap on today's episode. Uh, we went through the basic foundation of establishing a clear line of communication, and then we went through directional energy influence with our body language from the ground, and also aiding with the, with the schooling up as an extension of our hand to make physical contact if necessary, or just to use the vocal pressure to, to get some more stimulation. And then we progressed to today's concepts, which were preparation for the saddle and the bridle so that simply means that we emphasized on directional and energy influence and we use the concepts of effective communication or what we established during the first episode uh, is just purely um, the clear line developing a clear line of communication So after recapping on the previous two episodes, we started today with the basic principles of preparation for the equipment, the saddle and the bridle that we'll be putting on in the near future so that he is familiar with the sensations of those areas of sensation. And also to explain to him that we need him to respond off of that physical pressure, that tactile senses. He needs to understand that the physical pressure on the pole is gonna have to mean for him to bring his head in and down. Um, or to move his head to the sides and also then later on the sensations of the bit in his mouth and the sensations of where our legs will apply pressure and how we would like his body to move when we apply pressure in those areas. So this is just good preparation that'll make the whole tacking experience much easier and also the first backing experience much easier for Aragon or in that case for any horse. Once you have established that proper preparation, the backing can go quite smoothly and without much drama. So running through the previous two episodes, building on top of that, and now in episode three, where we've established the, the preparation part for the equipment that we'll be using for saddle and bridle, um, it makes things quite easy for our horse. At the same time, there's a lot of other things going on. As you can see, I'm standing on his right side. Whatever you do on the one side of the horse, you need to be able to do on the other side. I can't expect him to be comfortable with me um, doing things on the right side when I'm on, on his back if I can't do it from the ground. So whatever we do on the left, we do on the right. Whatever side the horse is most uncomfortable with, just try and do twice as much on that uncomfortable side. Applying some physical pressure just to back him up a bit as he's thinking of walking off. Good boy. So getting him to be soft and responsive is happening through every single phase and interaction where we are developing or asking new concepts. And even then when we are recapping on previous developments, we are constantly developing softness and responsiveness. Um, just a little uh, fun fact at the end, yeah. Um, horses' eyes are the largest out of all living land mammals. So it makes quite a lot of sense that we need to use that to our advantage because that is their primal way of observing and um, responding to sensations in their environment is their eyesight. They see quite similarly to us as humans during the daytime apart from certain colors. And then at nighttime, they can actually see better than what we can. So that is just purely the way their eyes are designed so that they are able to communicate with each other and also easier see movement and potential threats during during the night sky. 
thank you so much for making the time and viewing this episode. I really hope there was some value that you could find out of this experience where we introduced Aragon to some new skills, techniques and recapping on the previous techniques and skills and building on top of that. And hopefully you can also see the rapid progress as we shot episode two yesterday and now we are simply just shooting episode three as we advance every next training session. I will try and share with you as much of the content that we are going through as possible. Um, and then yeah just share with you how he's making his progress and what elements are most important when we make this progress further on um, please if you have any questions related to these topics please add it on the comment section below so that we can engage and interact and we can assist you and build better lives for horses around the globe if you feel like seeing the next episode's release please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and you'll see a notification on the release of episode 4. Thank you very much.